Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you with another tech video. Uh, today we're going to be installing an RK Tech head onto my 300. Uh, this is a 2018 uh, 300 XCW. It used to be a 250 XCW, but I put a big bore kit on it last summer. And uh, yeah, I am ready to install the RK Tech head. I'm just so impressed with the way it worked on my 125 that I went ahead and bought one for this. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So installing heads on two strokes is super simple. Uh, first thing you got to do though is drain the coolant because if you don't drain the coolant and you try to pop that head off, all the coolant that is up in the head and above it in this hose and radiator or whatever will run into the bottom of your motor. It's not the end of the world, but it's probably not going to run really well for a while. It's going to have to burn all that out. So I'm going to go ahead and drain that out and then, uh, well yeah, it's super simple after that. All right, on KTM's drain bolt on the water pumps right here, it's got a copper washer on it. That's how you know which one it is. Now, it's not gonna fly out of there until we take the cap off, because we gotta vent it. Boom, there we go. Uh, again, I run Evans coolant in all my two strokes because I really do think it does a better job of cooling and keeps them from boiling over when you get in the really hard stuff. Uh, so it's yeah and a huge thank you to Evans they've always helped me out for a very very long time now so um, anyway I I really like Evans I won't put it in four strokes um, unless it get too um, cold or too hot so once we get that coolant out of there um, it's just dripping a little bit I like to still next thing loosen this top hose here because there's still usually a little bit of coolant kind of trapped up in here so if we loosen this now with this open a little more coolant should come out and that should get all of it out then we can take the motor mounts and everything else now on these newer ktms the motor mounts are all uh, 45 uh, torx this one's hooked to the motor uh, to a pipe mount so I'm actually just going to leave it there and uh, I think it should be fine. Um, that way I don't have to unhook that and whatever. Alright, one last thing that I like to remove before I take the head off is this bolt right here. Uh, it's just a bleed bolt for the cooling system, for the coolant. Um, it's no big deal, but uh, we need to put that into the new head and to get it out once this head's off it's not like the end of the world but it's kind of tough because you can't hold this big disc it's a little bit pain so if you do it while it's still on the bike it's a lot easier now we're gonna get <coughs> all the head bolts out little tech tip there I just break them all loose and then come back in with the socket and it's easier to spin them out by hand. It's a lot faster that way. Um, and sometimes you can grab them with your hands on the actual bolt, but it's actually kind of hard because it's small and really close to the head. So having the socket in your hand just makes it a little bit easier. Take all these out and make sure <clears throat> If you're uh, going to reuse them, which I think I'm going to have to because I don't think I actually have any other crush washers, which is fine to reuse these. Um, you know, you can't use them forever, but a couple times is just fine. So make sure you keep track of those so they don't end up falling down inside the motor. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. There we go. Looks like it's burning pretty good. Pretty happy with that, actually. Just that leading exhaust edge is a little bit dark, but that's not bad at all. Um, yeah. I guess I'm riding it hard enough. All right, so let's clean this thing up so we can get a really good look at it and see what it looks like compared to the RK Tech. All right, so here's our stock head. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with this head. But a couple things to look at just so you can really see the difference. 
Um, first of all, look at this distance here. You can see that gap from the uh, top of the cylinder surface to the beginning of the squish band, which is this. This is called the squish band here. Um, so there's, you can see that that amount right there, and you can see the dome, like how curved this is in. Okay, and you can take a look at how wide the squish band is and how it rolls over. Anyway, there we go. So now let's take a look at the RK head. Um, uh, the first obvious difference are these milling marks in here that help with uh, combustion and efficiency that Kelsey puts in there. So that's the obvious, like, oh my gosh, that's clearly different. But then, if you come in here and you really look at that, that is a lot thinner. And then the squish band is a much different shape. So it's, uh, it's maybe a little bit narrower here, but it's flatter and it's not rounded it's really shoving the fuel charge into the center and then if you look at the domes it's way different the the rk tech dome is much shallower than this and all that ends up equaling a higher compression uh, motor first of all and then a much more efficient burning head so we're going to be able to raise the jetting on this thing quite a bit i'm really excited about that because that's what we did on the 125 and it really made a huge difference so all right <clears throat> to get this thing installed it's super simple we're going to uh set this down over here and now we're going to take our o-rings that come with their head so the cool thing one of the cool things about rk tech heads is that they're swappable domes so this dome uh, right here is set up for us. We're at 6,000 feet. I want to run pump gas in it uh, up here and I ride trails and I want more low to mid range not so much top range. So they build them for you which is awesome. Um, you know it's just really cool. So that's set up for me. Now we're going to take our o-rings. I like to take just a little bit of grease put them on the rings as I put them down in their little grooves that just kinda helps hold them there and I learned a trick from one of you guys here on YouTube I honestly can't remember who it is it might have been Cody uh, honestly I, I apologize for not remembering who it was but they gave me a trick to use on installing this so that these o-rings don't fall and I'll show you guys what that is here in just a second and it's it's easy it won't really go in any other way <laughs> So that's nice. Thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> um, but it is a certain way. So we drop that down in. <clears throat> and, you know, in case you're wondering, these dowel pin marks are how I kind of make sure I got it lined up. And there we go. Now we're going to grab a spark plug. So we've got a brand new spark plug. We're going to gap it to 20 thousandths. Right, we're going to put our little guy on there now here's the trick that you guys taught me is instead of before i was taking this and trying to like use it down on without dropping the dome and anyway keep the, the things in place what you guys were saying which is brilliant is just to take the plug throw it in here and you don't have to like torque it but get it in here so that it holds that dome where it needs to be there we go now we can just set it down in Whoever that was, thank you very much. Uh, and let me know in the comments who that was. All right, so we're ready to go back together, but I want to take a look and see what the inside of this thing looks like. Um, the last time I had this off was when I uh, uh, put the 300 kit on it, so I haven't looked inside this cylinder at all since then. So I'm just going to take a look and see what it looks like. Looks good in there. Looks really good, actually. Super happy. Cylinder looks awesome. Really happy with the way that's looking. Uh, it's got about uh, 35, 40 hours on it since I did the uh, big bore, so it's looking great. Uh, let's put this head on. All right, guys, there's really not much to tell you about this. Um, it's not really all that hard except for make sure you got it lined up and all that stuff. But one big thing to think about when you're doing it is to just be careful um, and just set it down nice and easy. You don't want to force anything. You don't want to, like, force it down onto the dowel pins or anything like that. So we're just gonna come in here. We can hold on to that spark plug. Again, thank you for that tip. There we go. <clears throat> so. All right guys, we've got our 
lined up, dropped in nice and tight. <clears throat> so now we're going to take our head bolts, going to run them in by hand so we don't cross thread anything. And again, you can use the socket. Get them started. All right, guys. <clears throat> so now we're going to tighten these down. I'm going to do it in a crisscross pattern. I'm not actually going to use a torque wrench. Sorry, everybody who's going to freak out about that. But uh, on a two-stroke head, I just don't feel like it's necessary. Um, I've installed, I don't know, how, whatever. <laughs> Thousands, hundreds, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to get them nice and tight. And we're going to go crisscross back and forth. And make sure we get them all about the same. Boom, there we go. Now, we can take our little bleed screw, put it back in to its home, and we'll hook up the hoses. Uh, and then we uh, will fill it with coolant. Uh, then I'm going to change a little bit of jetting. And then we're going to take it for a ride, see how it does. All right, guys, time to jet this thing. Got everything buttoned up on the bike. Um, and I'm just going to go on based on what I did to the 125. I'm going to do kind of the same idea. So 125, I'm running JD Red Needle, um, doing the same thing in the 300. I ended up with the JD Red in the number three position. I'm going to start there with this one. So we're in the number two. I'm going to take this clip off. And I've said this before, but always do this over like something where you can find it because <laughs> they like to fly places there we go put it in the number three and for those of you guys who don't know <clears throat> when you're counting clip positions it's always one at the top and then working down so if anybody says you know number one number two number three number four number five whatever that's from the top down so there we go all right, so we got that done now. We're gonna check on the main jet. All right, we got our Makuni Hex. It has got a 380 in it. On the 125, I went. I ended up going up three total, so I'm gonna get a 410. And we got a 30 pilot, so I did the same thing on I did uh, three up on the pilot for the other one, so we're going to do that. We'll go to a, uh, let's see, actually I went two up, so we'll go to a 35. All right, guys, got it full of coolant, got the gas tank back on, everything hooked back up. Going to fire it up and see what she do. Choke on. Well, that's a good sign, right? So uh, I set the air screw at one out uh, and I'm going to stop this video now because I'm going to have another whole video of us out and testing this thing with this jetting in it. So to recap what we just did, uh, we put an RK Tech head um, on this thing that is set up for 6,000 feet for a guy who wants to run pump gas. Uh, I'm going to be running 40 to 1 uh, oil mix. I usually run 50, but Kelsey's asked me to run 40 um, because, I don't know, he thinks that's better, so I'm going to do it. That's cool. Uh, we got a 410 main jet, a 35 pilot, the JD Red Needle, and the number 3. Uh, and I think I'm ready to go ride this thing. So make sure you join us as we test this thing. Tune. If we need to do any more tuning on the carburetor, we absolutely will. We'll get it right on the money so that you guys can have all the information and know what we think is the absolute best setup. I think this is going to be really close. So anyway, 
Got to get back after it, guys. I hope you guys get out and spread the gospel two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here is inspiring you guys to work on your dirt bikes. Yeah.